Hello, I'm Doug Fuller. I'm a senior research analyst at the Arbor Research Collaborative for Health. Uh, today I'll be presenting a paper from the Dialysis Outcomes and Practice Pattern Study titled International Comparisons to Assess Effects of Payment Regulatory Changes in the United States on Anemia Practice in Patients on Hemodialysis. DOPS program would not be possible without support from our principal funders, Amgen, Baxter Healthcare, Akila Aquapirin, and with further country and project level support from additional sponsors which are listed on our website at dops.org. Support for the DOPS program is provided without restrictions on publications. Three important regulatory changes with potential to impact U.S. anemia management occurred in 2011. In January, the U.S. Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS, introduced a major update to the ESRD Prospective Payment System, or PPS, that added approximately $3 billion worth of separately billable services to the bundled payment, primarily ESAs and iron. In June, the Food and Drug Administration approved a revision to ESA prescribing information that removed the hemoglobin target range of 10 to 12 grams per deciliter for patients on CKD. In July, the CMS proposed a modification of the Quality Incentive Payment Program that was later approved in November 2011 that removed the payment penalty for hemoglobin less than 10 grams per deciliter but retained the penalty for hemoglobin above 12. Now, many stakeholders anticipated that these financial incentives and regulatory updates would favor lower ESA dosing, greater use of the less expensive IV iron, and increase the likelihood that hemoglobin levels would decline. Because no significant anemia-related policy changes were implemented in other participating DOPS countries during the same time period, we compared recent trends in anemia practices and outcomes between the U.S., Europe, and Japan. We also evaluated whether and to what extent international differences in ESA dose over time were explained by differences in patient characteristics known to influence ESA dose, as well as other aspects of anemia management. The DOPS is an international multi-stage prospective cohort study of patients on in-center hemodialysis and practices ongoing since 1996. The present study uses data from the DOPS practice monitor which is designed on the basis of DOPS Phase 4 and Phase 5 from 2009 to 2015. Details of the study design and analytic methods are published, and DOPS practice monitor results have been consistent with published national data. The study extends the DPM framework to other DOPS countries with a complete follow-up during the analysis period, and these include Germany, Italy, Spain, the United Kingdom, and Japan between August 2010 and April 2013. We also provide additional historical cross-sections from DOPS 2 and DOPS 3. Please refer to the paper for additional details on the statistical methods presented in the paper. Table 1 presents a selection of patient characteristics in the sample at three time points, August 2010, December 2011, and April 2013. Largely, the samples were consistent over time between Europe, Japan, U.S. black patients, and U.S. non-black patients. However, we noted a slight increase in pre-dialysis body weight in Japan, as well as a de decline in catheter use in the U.S. sample, largely due to the transition between DOPS4 and DOPS5. Turning to long-term ESA dose and hemoglobin trends, on this graph, the U.S. is rep represented in the green line, Europe in the blue line, and Japan in the red line. In the U.S., the prescribed, mean prescribed ESA dose among treated patients rose steadily from 2002 to 2005, plateaued between 2006 and 2010, and then sharply declined from 2010 to 2013. A similar increase was observed in Europe between 2002 and 2005, with a slight decrease in 2006, and then remained stable between 2006 and 2012. And in Japan, the ESA dose fluctuated slightly but remained uh, relatively stable between 2002 and 2013. Focusing on August 2010 to April 2013, using monthly cross-sections, we know again in the uh, green line is the U.S. black patients, the brown line is the U.S. non-black patients, the blue line is the European patients, and red line is the Japanese patients. 
we observe between August 2010 and approximately December 2011, a very broad decline in ESA doses followed by relative stability in the U.S. sample as well as uh, small decreases in Europe and uh, a slight increase in Japan. Adjusted for seasonality, the declines in ESA doses were 40.4% and 38% among black and non-black patients in the U.S. respectively, a decline of 6.4% in Europe and an increase in Japan of 19.4%. We found similar results in analyses restricting to IV potent doses only, analyses expressing ESA dose per unit hemoglobin or per kilogram pre-dialysis body weight, and in analyses using alternate conversion ratios for ESA dose. Adjusted differences in prescribed ESA dose scaled by body weight compared with U.S. non-black patients increased in U.S. black patients from 2% to 17%, declined in Europe from negative 41% to negative 11%, and declined in Japan from negative 60% to negative 18%. Differences were slightly larger in unscaled analyses and analyses expressing dose per, hemoglobin, per unit hemoglobin. Long-term hemoglobin levels in the U.S. Uh, as well as Europe reached their peaks in 2005 and 2006 respectively. And although mean hemoglobin levels in the U.S. were substantially higher than those in Europe from 2002 to 2006, Levels declined in both regions and reached parity in 2010 and 2011. Hemoglobin levels in Japan, by contrast, increased steadily from 2002 to 2010, and by 2013, they nearly reached a mean hemoglobin level in the U.S. Hemoglobin trends between August 2010 and 20, uh, April 2013. Again, you can see the, the relative parity between U.S. and Europe at the left side of the slide in August 2010 the divergence of the U.S. hemoglobin levels uh, after the 2011 events, and seasonality adjusted absolute differences between these time periods were 0.9 and 0.8 grams per deciliter decline in black and non-black patients in the U.S. respectively, and a decline of 0.2 grams per deciliter in Europe and a slight increase of 0.1 gram per deciliter in Japan. Unadjusted mean hemoglobin differences again compared with U.S. non-black patients, decreased from 0.1 grams per deciliter to almost zero grams per deciliter in U.S. black patients, increased from a negative 0.1 gram per deciliter to 0.5 gram per deciliter in Europe, and decreased in Japan from negative one gram per deciliter to point, negative 0 0.05 gram per deciliter. Iron prescription in Europe largely uh, remained unchanged. There is a slight increase in iron prescription in the U.S., 7.4% um, and 10.7% respectively for black and non-black patients. And in Japan, there is also an increase of 7.9%. Median monthly IV iron doses among treated patients in the U.S. remained stable during the period, approximately 50 milligrams per week and oral iron use remained less than 5% in all regions. Turning to our facility survey data, hemoglobin upper targets above 12 grams per deciliter decreased in the U.S. from 94% to 16%, as well as in Europe decreasing from 92% to 87%. Meanwhile, in Japan, the targets increased from 66% to 82%. And by and large, in the U.S., this increase is consistent with the timing of the, the changes in 2011. Hemoglobin lower targets below 10 grams per deciliter is in figure 3b. And in the U.S., this number increased from 70% of facilities to 96% of facilities, and also in Europe from 40% to 79% of facilities. Japan, the lower hemoglobin targets remain mostly stable between 91 and 94% per year. Observed ESA and hemoglobin trends in the U.S. from 2010 to 2013 exceeded prior trends from 2002 to 2010 or trends in other DOPS countries over the same time period. In contrast, we observed rising ESA dose, IV iron prescription, and hemoglobin levels in Japan and mostly flat trends in four European countries. The most rapid declines occurred soon after the ESA label revision in June of 2011 rather than after the 
prospective payment system implementation in January of 2011. We infer from this that the U.S. Dialysis community did not primarily change in EMEA practice for cost reasons alone, but within the context of supported clinical guidance. Similar changes to reimbursement and payment link quality initiatives in other countries, for example, Germany and Japan, seem to have had a more modest effect on anemia management than in the U.S. DOPS practice monitor data also suggests many U.S. dialysis facilities may now be voluntarily limiting prescribed ESA doses at a much lower maximum levels, approximately 30,000 units per week. ESA doses at or approaching even this lower maximum dose remain very uncommon and are essentially absent in Japan. Taren et al. reported comparable relative reductions in mean ESA doses adjusted for hemoglobin among black and non-black patients in the United States after the 2011 policy changes, indicating that ESA doses to support a hemoglobin level could be reduced in both groups. Our study extends this result in showing that an adjustment for an array of common patient case mix factors did not explain much of the observed differences in prescribed dose among the DOPS regions at several time points. Together, we feel these data support the speculation by McFarland et al. that the between country differences in anemia management have been related primarily to clinical guidelines and reimbursement policies rather than specific physiologic requirements. Interregional differences in treatment targets for hemoglobin level have also been shrinking. In addition to clinical guidelines, reimbursement policies may account for differences between U.S. and European hemoglobin levels in the most recent years. ESA dosing guidance in the U.S. before 2011 recommended treating patients with CKD to a hemoglobin between 10 and 12 grams per deciliter and may have led to administration of higher doses than necessary for many ESA-resistant patients. Although the proportion of patients on dialysis undergoing kidney transplant each year is low, careful monitoring of transfusion rates remains an important priority, particularly among transplant candidates. The strengths of our study are that the DOPS includes a wide range of data collected in standardized fashion internationally since 2002, enabling the regional comparisons presented in the paper. Much of our contemporary data collection is performed directly by electronic health record download or by web-based data entry tools. As well, the declines in, in hemoglobin and ESA doses in the U.S. After, after the PPS implementation were first described using DOPS data and have since been confirmed with national registry data sources. The limitations of the study are that the DPM only goes backward to August of 2010, which limits our ability to uh, account for prior trends before implementation of the PPS. Our trend models had to account for the transition between DOPS 4 and DOPS 5, and this may result with an may result in a slight underestimation of the actual trends. ESA doses were converted to IV equivalent and alpha equivalents, and uh, these were done using a global conversion factor, which may not take into account specific uh, regulations or, or payment factors that, that would influence that conversion. Another unmeasured dialysis practice is not captured by the DOPS or in the DOPS practice monitor may partially explain any residual differences in ESA dose or hemoglobin between study regions. So in conclusion, we reported dramatic trends in U.S. anemia management practices and laboratory outcomes between August of 2010 and April of 2013, subsequent to updates to U.S. regulatory guidance and reimbursement policies in 2011. Changes in anemia management practices and, and intermediate outcomes in other countries were minimal during this time. U.S. ESA dosing reductions likely reflect efforts to limit high ESA doses and accept lower hemoglobin levels in response to changes in reimbursement policy and regulatory guidance. And despite adjusted ESA dosing levels that have recently converged, hemoglobin levels in the U.S. are now lower than in Europe for the first time in more than a decade. Residual differences may reflect higher prevalence or severity of ESA resistance in U.S. patients. Thank you for watching.